Hi everyone, this is Ted Bowman here, Banyan Hill Publishing. I'm the editor of The Bowman Letter. Uh, a little bit uh, earlier this month I wrote uh, an article for our daily e-zine, the Sovereign Investor Daily, in which I uh, pointed out that um, despite promises from Congress and from the presidential administration that the majority of uh, the effect of our tax cuts, the recent tax cuts, would be to create jobs and create growth, uh, in fact the um, the biggest share of uh, money that has been received in the form of these tax cuts seems to be going back to share buybacks. Now before I uh, go into the details about this, just remember that a share buyback essentially happens when a company uh, goes into the stock market and, and buys back uh, a proportion of its own shares from people who have bought them. Uh, that has the effect of increasing the earnings per share since there are fewer shares outstanding on the market. That makes the company look more profitable, uh, it makes the stock look more attractive, it boots the stock price. Uh, and it can do all of that without the company actually becoming more profitable, uh, selling more products, becoming more efficient, inventing anything new or doing anything else. In other words, it's a form of financial engineering. Now, um, there was a response to uh, my argument which is that tax, uh, th that the, uh, the use of the tax cuts to uh, achieve uh, share buybacks was bad for the economy uh, and also uh, basically not what was promised. Well, uh, a couple of uh, commenters uh, wrote back and, and said a few things about uh, what I had uh, written and I wanted to address some of those because I think they reflect fundamental misconceptions uh, both about what I was trying to say and also I think quite frankly about how the economy works. Uh, first of all, um, the suggestion was made that perhaps uh, tax cuts are controversial um, and that really we should always welcome tax cuts. Uh, and, the, and the only reason why a person might not welcome tax cuts uh, is because they have an emotional uh, feeling about seeing other people get bigger tax cuts than they do. Um, and that's particularly true about corporate taxes. Well, that's absolutely not the case. Uh, tax cuts can be good, uh, they can also be bad. Uh, they're great when tax cuts uh, reflect uh, an accurate uh, relationship between government expenditure and uh, government revenue and when they support the objectives of government, uh, when they reflect the true cost to society of different economic sectors uh, doing the work that they do uh, because of course many corporations uh, pollute, they do things that, uh, that they're not charged for so taxes are a way that a society helps to balance out those kinds of unseen non-financial accounts. Well, objecting to tax cuts in this case has absolutely nothing to do with emotion and I promise you uh, I'm not jealous of the corporates uh, who got big tax cuts. My objection is simply, number one, that uh, the tax cuts are coming at a time when we are already in massive deficit, they're going to increase the deficit uh, that the United States government has and they have the likelihood of actually undermining our economic prosperity in the, wrong, uh, in the long run. So therefore, whether I like my tax cut or not, I don't see it as a good thing. That's because I'm a responsible citizen uh, and I look at things as an economist and say, well, you know, this doesn't make sense. This is not good for the country. Uh, it's not going to be good in the long run for our share prices either. So let's forget about emotion. This is not about emotion or jealousy. Uh, the second question is, you know, why would um, one object to uh, the notion of companies using uh, the benefits of tax cuts, all the extra cash they're getting to repurchase shares which is basically a way of boosting their share price uh, and which is basically their right to do. I mean as uh, many people argue, uh, incorrectly I think, the only uh, goal or rather the only role of management is to increase shareholder value. That's known as the shareholder value theory which uh, many people actually argue is one of the prime causes of the decline of the US economy in the last 30 years. I'll come back to that later. The question is why do I object to this? Well, there's two reasons. One, at a purely political level, uh, we were told that these tax cuts were going to go towards job creation and growth. Um, that's pr patently not the case. The numbers show very clearly uh, that as many of the people who objected to the tax cuts, like me, said, uh, the, the tax cuts are actually going to share repurchases. Now again, this is perfectly within the rights of companies to repurchase their own shares. It didn't used to be. Up until the 1980s, repurchasing your old shares or your own shares was considered to be illegal stock, stock manipulation. Under the Reagan administration that was changed and very rapidly share repurchases became a very very big deal in the US economy. 
uh, it became uh, such a big deal that uh, this year, uh, I think the estimate is that something like $1.5 trillion will probably be spent during the course of 2018 in trying to, uh, in, in one way or another, uh, manage the cash flows of corporations in ways other than investing in production. So in other words, companies are, are acquiring a great deal of cash, they have been uh, over the last decade or so, uh, and, but less and less of it has actually been proportionally going into actual investment, job creating investment. So um, this once illegal activity, which is now legal, uh, my objection to it primarily is that when you combine it with the current structure of corporate uh, remuneration, corporate payment for executives, there's a, a tremendous, a tremendous incentive on the part of uh, corporate executives to use share buybacks to increase uh, the value of their own stock options. Uh, and because companies are often judged on the basis of their quarterly results, uh, you know, how did their share price do in the quarter? How did earnings per share do in the quarter? Uh, share buybacks are a way of artificially pleasing the stock market. The problem is that the alternative to share buybacks, uh, which is investment in production, is not happening. And the reason it's not happening is because uh, the average American and many people around the world don't have enough money to buy the outputs of uh, the companies that have all this profit. Now, that's a classic problem of lack of demand. That's my personal theory. I believe very strongly that one of the biggest problems we face in this country is that uh, an enormous amount of national income has been directed towards uh, very, very few people, including the owners of large corporations, shareholders, but also uh, their executives, and that in years past, a lot of that money used to go out as uh, wages. When people have wages, they buy stuff. When they buy stuff, uh, companies have a reason to invest. Now, uh, despite what uh, I was accused of, I did not suggest that these corporate uh, tax savings should all be directed to, uh, to worker wages. That would be absurd. Uh, my objection was, number one, that we were told that this was going to happen, or at least that some uh, worker uh, compensation would change. But in fact, it's been marginal, and most of it has just been PR fluff. There's very little basis uh, for any claim to be made that this is benefiting directly American workers, who are, after all, the main consumers of the products of American companies. Um, instead, what we're seeing, basically, is that this huge tax break is going to result in a further transfer of wealth to the very top of the American income pile. Now, uh, this is not a political issue for me. This is an issue of economics and of history. Economically, it's not good when that happens because it means that the average American doesn't have enough money to buy stuff. If they can't buy stuff, companies can't invest profitably, which in turn makes share buybacks seem particularly attractive. So in a sense, share buybacks are part of the problem that share buybacks are said to address. If companies can't in, uh, find investment opportunities, uh, they have to you know, buy back their shares and re reward money uh, back to their shareholders. But if they were actually possibly increasing the, the share of money that was going to their labor, to their workforce, maybe people would buy more of their stuff and they'd be able to find investment markets. That's the way the circle of the economy works. That's the way uh, I was taught anyway. So my first objection is at an economic level, this is not a good thing. But my second objection is really basically political. I think that uh, having lived in many different countries around the world, particularly countries with huge inequality, it's not a stable situation. It's not something that you can sustain. I'm not suggesting for the first minute that US corporations should be giving money to their workers for political reasons. What I'm suggesting is that we need to relook at the laws that govern uh, share trading, the, the incentive structures that we have, the incentive structures that encourage uh, corporate executives who are often enormous shareholders in their country or companies to manipulate share prices for their own benefit, not for the benefit of the company as a long-term going concern. And that uh, helps me to return to the question of the, the shareholder uh, value issue. Uh, as uh, a comment on my article said, the only uh, role of management is to increase shareholder value. Well, that's actually not necessarily true and it's not necessarily something that everyone agrees with. Uh, up until about 30 years ago, it was a given that the, the goal of a corporation was multifaceted, to grow the business, to produce good products, to please your customers, uh, to provide rewarding work for employees, uh, et cetera, et cetera. In other words, it was a very holistic understanding of the role of a corporation as part of a larger economy and a larger society. The shareholder value theory basically says it's all about uh, the numbers that go to the shareholders and nothing else. Well, 
All I can say is that's been the ruling uh, theology or <laughs> let's say the ruling ideology uh, of corporations in the United States for the last 30 odd years. And folks, look where it's got us. We have a bunch of very, very uh, wealthy, cash rich companies. Uh, we have an economy that is dawdling along. We have uh, 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 low employment, but no perceptible increase in wages uh, because basically there's no reason to increase them. Uh, so I think we have to be much more acute in our criticism of things like share buybacks. We can't just rely on you know, basic notions that, well, it's up to the company to do what they like. Uh, we can't you know, just retreat to those kinds of positions. We need to look at what the impact of this is on the economy in the long term uh, and what the impact is likely to be on your wallets. Because I promise you, uh, a, a, an economy that's built on financial shenanigans like share buybacks, which again, were illegal up until the 1980s, is not a healthy economy. So I'm afraid I can't agree that they're nothing to worry about. We need to worry about them a lot. Again, this is Ted Bowman speaking to you from Banyan Hill Publishing. Uh, please consider subscribing to my channel and uh, having uh, more access to what we and some of my colleagues have to say. Thank you.